So you've probably heard of CSI, or Crime Scene Investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something a little bit different, and that's Wildlife CSI, Wildlife Crime Scene Investigation. And specifically, I want to talk to you about how we use these crime scene investigations to catch and actually prosecute poachers. The COVID pandemic has obviously focused the world's attention on illegal wildlife and wildlife trade and, and zoonotics, the diseases that are emerging out of wildlife. But even before COVID, there were dedicated men and women around the world who were tackling this illegal trade in wildlife. The most familiar form of this trade is the poaching of animals, either for food, because of ideas that animal body parts can be alternative medicine, or to make ornaments and status symbols, or for pets to send to Europe or the USA. Sadly, around the world, there is a large demand for these wildlife products, and where there is demand, even if fulfilling this demand is illegal, there will be someone desperate enough to take these risks. Across much of Africa, this sadly results in poaching. Fortunately, there are brave and very dedicated people around the world who work tirelessly to combat this illegal activity. Now the reality of how anti-poaching teams catch poachers is slightly different from the reality that you might get from fiction and movies. So I'm going to show you a, a fictionalised ideal of what might happen. An anti-poaching patrol in the African bush comes across an elephant that has been killed. Run! But the poachers saw them coming and ran off. So the patrol set up an ambush to catch the poachers when they return to collect the elephant tusks that they have been paid to gather. When the poachers return, the anti-poaching team makes the arrest and throws them in jail. So I hope you enjoyed that little dramatised animation of an anti-poaching operation. While it does show some of the elements of an anti-poaching operation, it misses some very, very important principles um, that have to be adhered to if you want to actually catch and convict anyone involved in wildlife crime. The one thing we have to remember in any crime is that our suspect is considered innocent until they are proven guilty. And this is a, a crucial, crucial factor in upholding law and making sure that justice is served properly. Imagine those people that were caught were in fact not doing anything wrong. They happened to stumble across an elephant that had died either naturally or been shot by someone else, but they were actually there collecting grass to, to fix the roofs of their thatched huts. Um, there's many reasons why they may be there and we're unfortunately in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of crime scene investigation and how it fits within convicting people involved in wildlife crime, be that traffickers or poachers. Before we can convict our suspect of being guilty, we first have to take them into a court of law with judges and juries and these people are all going to want to see evidence, evidence that we have collected from our crime scene. Now just because we have evidence doesn't necessarily mean that the suspect is automatically guilty. We need to use something known as the criminalistic triangle. The criminalistic triangle links the evidence found on the crime scene with evidence found on the perpetrator or suspect, and both of these with the evidence found on the victim in our scenario, the elephant. If we cannot make the connection between the points on this triangle with evidence, we are unlikely to be able to prove our case. Now, as crime scene investigators, we have a number of duties at every crime scene. The first of those is to secure the crime scene. Now, this is securing it in terms of safety of the people that are gonna be working on the crime scene, but also we are looking after the security of the evidence on the crime scene. And we need to make sure that it's not disturbed, tampered with, nothing changes from how it was right after the crime was committed. Once we've secured the crime scene, we then have to search for the evidence. Um, and this doesn't just mean kind of having a quick look, we really have to have a good search. And there are methods and techniques to make sure that when we are searching, we are searching in a very strategic way that we are hopefully gonna find as much evidence as we possibly can. Once that evidence has been found, we then need to sample the evidence and collect the evidence. We also need to make sure that evidence is bagged properly and that we don't break the evidence or contaminate it by smudging fingerprints and all those sort of things. There's a lot of skill and technique involved in making sure you do that properly. The final role of the crime scene investigation is 
to secure the evidence that we have collected. The security of this evidence is important both when we collect it at the crime scene as well as at the courtroom where it is being used, but also it is important that there is a chain of security and documentation of that security from the crime scene to the courtroom and everywhere in between. And this chain is called the chain of custody. And if this chain is broken, the evidence is thrown out. So if a crime scene investigation is done properly, there should be no doubt regarding the source of the evidence, that there is an absence of any contamination within the evidence, that there is a link between the evidence, the location and the suspect, that there has been no possibility of security breaches within the crime scene or after the crime scene where the evidence and where the evidence is kept, and that there is complete and thorough documentation of all the evidence with no errors or ambiguities. Only if all of these things are done properly can we ensure that justice is done. And this may show that the suspect is guilty, but it may also show that the suspect is innocent. Either way, crime scene investigation must collect all the evidence, whether it proves them innocent or guilty. Unfortunately, crime scene investigation is something that is commonly missing with wildlife crimes. And this means that wildlife crimes go unpunished simply because there is not enough evidence to convict the perpetrators. Now you might find this a crazy oversight, but just imagine how frustrated you would be if you have put your life on the line to catch poachers only to see them let free when it comes to the court proceedings. And worse than this, you don't even know why they've been set free. Sadly, despite the incredible job many wildlife law enforcement personnel do, wildlife crime scene investigation is a highly technical job. And quite often, particularly in places like rural Africa, the personnel that are undertaking anti-poaching or looking for smuggled goods in roadblocks simply have not had the training to know what to look for and how to collect the evidence. So you might ask, what is being done to fix this situation? Well, fortunately, there is a group of very dedicated professionals working across Africa and beyond, coming from all over the world, to help bring together crime scene investigation experts and ensure that capacity can be built within Africa. And based on this, we would hope this would increase level of prosecution for poachers and wildlife smugglers and increase the deterrent and thus reduce the number of wildlife crimes that actually occur. So I hope that taught you a little bit about what wildlife crime scene investigation is and why it's so important. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have got questions, comments, or want me to make a video on something related, please do let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe, like, all those things. It will encourage me to make more videos. And until next time, thank you very much.